It is a race against time as the search for the missing Titanic intensifies. The rescuers are working all night to save the Titanic subcrew. The oxygen level in the submersible is depleting as we speak. There are five passengers on board. What are the challenges that lie ahead for the rescuers and what are the survival chances of the explorers? To answer all of this, we have with us Greg Swenson, founder of Brig McAdam. He's also an international affairs expert. Thank you so much for joining us and be honest, sir. Good to be here. Thank you. Now, Mr. Swenson, the search and rescue crew have detected underwater sounds. They have described them as banging noises. Do you think that this will help the crew members in locating the exact position of the missing Titan? I'm not sure about exact position, but I think it's a good sign. And the fact that they were coming in in 30 minute intervals could indicate that the people on the on the on the vessel are are taking turns or, you know, purposely making these noises in intervals, which makes uh, which would make it a lot more uh, attractive to um, to the vessel, the search, the search vessels. So look, the, you know, the U.S. and Canadian P3 and P8s have been uh, dropping sono buoys and that's the Canadian sono buoy is what picked up the noise. So it's a good sign. But but as for pinpointing exactly where it is, that's going to require, I think, some more luck for sure, as well as the uh, the French Victor 6000 uh, remotely operated vessel and as well as the, the U.S. Navy vessel that that is has probably arrived overnight in the region. Right, Mr. Benson, I was just coming to that, that what are the challenges that lie ahead for the crew members and what are the protocols that they are following in search of the missing passengers? Well, I mean, the good news now is they're still considering it an active search. You know, granted, the, the, there's real difficulty locating a 22-foot vessel in the vast ocean. You know, the, and the area they're searching is two times the state of Connecticut. It's, it's a real challenge just from, from, for that difficulty. But also how to bring it to the surface when they, if they do find it. That's another challenge, uh, given how deep the, the vessel probably is you know, 2,000 feet uh, below the surface or two miles below the surface. Uh, and also, uh, as you pointed out, the oxygen supply is due to run out this morning, uh, this morning East Coast time. So then there's also the possibility of limited rations. So, you know, th this is a, a race against time. It is still an active search. Uh, there is probably a point, and I don't, I don't know when, but in the next few days, where it becomes, uh, where it moves into the recovery phase, if they uh, if they give up hope that the passengers are still alive. Absolutely, I was just coming to that. That the sub was uh, deployed on Sunday with 96 hours worth of oxygen, and it is expected to run out any moment. Talk to us about the severity of the situation. Yeah, it, it really can't be more severe. In many ways, it reminds me of the the Chinese, uh, the Chilean mine ten years ago, which ended ended well, but uh, not not without great risk. So, look, there are five surface vessels and two remotely operated vessels. We've got the the FATO system, which is the the flyaway deep ocean salvage system. These are the best search and rescue teams in the world. The U.S. Navy, the Canadian Navy, and then you have some assistance from from other countries like the French. You know, there, there is a all hands on deck, obviously, but, but it is a real challenge. It is a, it is an unbelievable challenge, given that, you know, the, the vessel was supposed to surface on Sunday. It was supposed to be, you know, just a, a half a day trip. And, and, you know, for safety, they had, you know, 96 hours of oxygen. But but it, it's looking uh, it's looking difficult at this point because it is there is now almost Thursday morning on the East Coast. Absolutely, the oxygen level is depleting as we speak and apparently there were reports that claim that a former employee of the sub in 2018 voiced concerns regarding the Titan citing potential danger to the passengers. However, no action was taken. Is it true? Well, it's difficult to say if it's true or not. I think there will be, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, repercussions from this disaster, uh, whether it works out or not. But I think there will be, uh, you know, a lot of interest in, you know, where were there enough precautions? Is the equipment up to speed? And and I, I know there's been reporting on on suspicions that they're not using the absolute top shelf equipment, but I think it's too early to speculate on that. Mr. Gregson, my last question to you, a rather very pertinent question, that the search has been widened for the missing uh, sub aircrafts and ships have been deployed to locate the missing sub and the explorers. But the question is that what are the survival chances of the explorers at the moment? 
It's not great. And again, because the oxygen is running out on one hand, but also because of the, the strength, the sheer magnitude of these ocean currents, you know, the, the area has been widened because the vessel could have been moved by currents. And so th this is a real challenge. You know, the, the last thing you want is to is to actually widen the search area. Although I believe these uh, noises th that they picked up, um, the, the Canadian P8s and, and, and the buoys have picked up, you know, that is a, a good sign. So that might enable them to, to narrow or at least focus on a more defined area. But this is a great challenge right now. And, and it's as I said, it's a race against time. Absolutely. Experts uh, also say that even if the Titan is located in the North Atlantic, it could be nearly impossible to reach if it is stuck on the ocean floor. That's that's right, because even the, you know, the, the uh, American Navy, the U.S. Navy uh, manned vessels can't go that deep. So you have to send a remotely operated uh, vessel down to the ocean floor. You know, moving it to the surface is a challenge. And, and the door cannot be opened from within. So they've got to, they have to get it to the surface and then have it open from the outside. These are logistical challenges. And, you know, as every day goes by, the, the chances become, uh, you know, the, the probability of success is greatly reduced. All right, Mr. Swenson, the missing Titan is out of contact. We only hope that the search and rescue team are able to find out the five passengers on board. But thank you so much for joining us and sharing your insights yes, with us on this. Thanks for having me. Thank you.